right over your head. Yeah. That's what it takes to get whiskey in the state. Yeah. Oh, that's what destiny looks like, people. Daniel, one of the questions that we get asked constantly. Yeah, almost daily. Can you can you ship me the whiskey? Or why can't you? Where can I buy the whiskey online? Yeah, ship to me. Or why can we? I can't get this in Australia. <laughs> or why can't I get this in Oklahoma? So next door. So the Whiskey Tribe is a worldwide community, mm -hmm. uh, and in other countries, the shipping of the whiskey is a non-issue. In the states, though, they can just get things. In the states, though, the number of hurdles, barbed wire, you know like boot camp? Mm -hmm. And they got like the barbed wire and you're crawling through the mud and do, 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 right over your head. Yeah. That's what it takes to get whiskey in the state. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, only you do it on the floor of a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't whiskey be shipped? Everything we say, you're gonna be able to find exceptions. No, because we'll, we'll keep general. All right, we'll, we'll keep it general. Yeah. We'll keep it general. So, All right. here's story time, Rex. Right. Ages ago, there was a drinking problem really across the world. Ireland attempted prohibition, not prohibition, but they attempted the abstinence. Let's abstain from alcohol. Yeah. At one point, millions of people took the pledge, but it never became a government rule. Right. Then Canada gave it a shot. Mm -hmm. It only lasted for a few years. Right. With prohibition. Yeah. And they're like, eh. So then America's like, hold my beer. We got Literally, it. hold my beer <laughs> and then don't give it back for a decade. Yeah. Because we're going to make it work. When we screw ourselves, yeah. we really screw, we get in there, man. Yeah, it was a horrible idea and it didn't work. It basically uh, collapsed the distilling industry in the U.S. and brought it down to only big companies, six big guys who were still right. had licenses to make whiskey. Right. And then all the outlaws made all the money. They finally decide, look, this isn't working mm. and we're going to repeal it. And uh, this is when uh, December 5th, 1933, the 21st Amendment arrives. Right. And the 21st Amendment is the only amendment to ever have been an amendment that repealed another amendment. With You're contributing with I'm the Googles. I'm going to constitutioncenter.org amendment which ratified not by the legislatures of the states, but by ratifying conventions. Yes. As called for by the which is sort of section like, of the Constitution in Article 4, allowing for ratification. Okay. Which right. is sort of like a committee right. appointed by each legislature to decide. Sure. Several of the states decided to not vote on it at all. Two said no. The Carol South Carolina, I think, was one of them. And then everybody else said, yes, let's end this shit. But here's the problem. Right. They didn't actually end prohibition. What they did was they said, and this is a paraphrase, they said, number one, not our problem anymore. Right. Number two, uh, it's the state's problem now. You guys do whatever you want. And if any of you decide to keep prohibition active, right. you can. And no one else is legally allowed to ship alcohol in and out of states so that if, are dry. So yeah. what happened was all the 50 states were like, okay, well now what do we do? Right. And there was no guideline. There was no federal guidelines. The feds said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. It's basically trying to navigate the the alcohol laws of 50 separate countries. Well, every one of the 50 states came up with our own solution. Now, the vast majority of them instituted a three-tier system. You have three specific pieces of the whiskey process coming from the still to your hands. The mm -hmm. first is the maker. Maker or producer or in the importer. brewery, the winery, the people making things. Yeah, people making alcoholic things. Second one is? The distributor. That's right, this who is picks person, it up from the makers. They're basically, they're, they're the shipping people. The UPS of the whiskey world or the alcohol world. But, it, but it's not UPS, it's not FedEx, it's, it's not, not them. There's an entire industry of distributors. That's all they do is to take it from makers to the third party, which is the retailers. Retailers who get it direct to consumer. Retailer, this is liquor stores, bars, restaurants, now, people that are actually selling. Some why, states are controlled. Why would you have three separate tiers, three hands? Why is this possibly the best solution? One, it creates a whole lot of extra jobs. And each and step in that each process. Each step gets taxed. So, so the makers get taxed for making it. Yep. And then they sell it to the distributor. And then the distributor gets a tax and then they sell it to the retailer. The retailer pays taxes, and then they sell it to you, and you pay sales tax. There's not a lot of uh, financial incentive for lawmakers to jump in and say, hey, 
Soon as you take away that money, then all of a sudden they're having to look at taxing other things, which is never popular. So here's what it means practically for everybody. Depending on your state, you may not be able to get your whiskey out to the world unless you can get a distributor with big enough distribution right. to actually get all of your whiskey into all the stores everyone actually shops at. Right. But to do that, you have to prove that you can sell enough whiskey to justify them picking up your whiskey. That's a sort of a How chicken you... and an egg situation, right? <laughs> yeah. So say you eventually convince uh, a retailer like Total Wine to start carrying your whiskey. If they pick it up and it doesn't sell, yeah. that's the end of that. Yeah. That's going to be a real problem. May never get another shot at that, or maybe years before you get another shot now, at that. Now, here's how it's even more convoluted and messed up. You can't say, hey, go down to Billy Bob's. He's got our whiskey, and he's got a sale going. And Because now you're prefer showing preferential treatment, advertising one retailer over another. That's yeah. illegal. And if we, uh, try, if we get it to a company that can ship, we just have to get our whiskey to a state that allows shipping, but then they can only ship to the states they're legally allowed to ship to. That being said, like um, the Masters of Malt, they had an advent calendar, which was very popular. Mm -hmm. and they, they were a company uh, based out of the UK, I yep. think. And they were sourcing all these amazing whiskeys and they would have this ad advent calendar. And it was selling like gangbusters That's across really the states. That's really what launched this, the vault channel. Selling like gangbusters across the states and they would ship people alcohol from you know across the pond yeah and uh and then, all, and then after a, a couple of years a few years they shut that down well what happened is they got bought out yeah and the new owners didn't want to risk something uh, going wrong with that like losing money from being sued or right. being banned or things like that right so they just made an announcement bam we are now no longer shipping to anywhere in the u.s tough shit <laughs> And, uh, but they've recently said that they're looking to find a solution, but who knows what that means, right? Now, it, 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 after all of that, right, I, I always try and look for a silver lining. It's mm -hmm. like, yes, it sucks, but uh, the last I heard, and this was like in mid-2018-ish, mm -hmm. there was a Supreme Court case looking at this. But no one knows what direction it's going to go. Is still... And here's the thing, even if it passes, now, it doesn't eliminate the three-tiered system. The, the Supreme Court process is basically looking at the the shipping, the distribution, the accessibility. So the if States. it fixes shipping laws, right. that's fine, but it doesn't address the three-tiered system. And legally, even if the shipping laws right. become fine, we still can't ship direct to consumer because we're in Texas. Sure. The way that laws usually work is you want to change something, then you, there's a lobbying effort, mm -hmm. right? Everybody gets together. You create a special interest, you like a specific thing you want to see changed, everybody puts their money into it. And then people that have relationships and networking with the people that make the laws, then they do their backdoor deals and all that. Uh, and then finally you can start to get some things changed. Mm -hmm. the, the the problem with the three-tier system is like all of the lobbying money. It's a lot more money on the side of on the people who don't want that to go away. On maintaining the status quo. Yeah. So for right now in Texas, for example, right. there were three things that we were we're looking to accomplish that would change everyone's lives forever. Mm -hmm. One is eliminating the two bottle per person in the distillery. By the way, so what he's talking about is if you go to any distillery uh, in Texas, I think across a lot of other states too. But in Texas for sure. You can't pick up more than two two it's a full size bottles of 1500 whiskey. milliliters so you can do like however it breaks down four uh, four half size two full size and that's once a month right a human being per person right. every 30 days it would be great if it went away completely right but the retailers keep saying well that's not fair because then why is anyone ever going to go to retail and our <laughs> argument is dude you won't carry our product great so, so it's not going to affect no, you at all that, that's, that's exactly the point so um, the craft, the craft makers of uh, beer and wine and spirits, there really needs to be a scenario where they can have people at least come to them directly mm -hmm. and buy some things. Yeah. Especially if the retail outlets won't carry the thing. The other thing that would be nice is the wineries in Texas did get a law passed that allowed them to ship direct to consumers. But the problem is in Texas, the beer guys, the wine guys, and the liquor guys are not all on the same page and they're not working together. At all. So everything that happens for the wine guys, they're right. like, hey, got it. And no. all the liquor and beer are like, no, here, hey. Credit, credit where credit's due. Yeah. In terms of uh, lobbying efforts actually being effective mm -hmm. and executed, well, the wine guys. Wine guys got it going on. No they, kidding. And they're getting a lot of good progress made on actually being able to ship. Yes. By the way, beer just got a law passed. Did you hear this, Deb? Akapon's life is about to change. 
beer just got the law passed in the Texas legislature allowing to go sales of beer at breweries. Right on. So it used to be you had to go to a store or some, you know, like Whole Foods or right. somewhere like that. You could buy a growler of beer. Now you could do it through the brewery. Have we depressed you enough? I know. <laughs> hey, all you've got to know is that, look, we are working on it and all it's going to take, right. this is a years long solution. Right. All it's going to take is for one of the big companies with a lot of money whose interests align with ours about shipping direct to consumer alcohol mm -hmm. and things start changing. Amazon, maybe. This is my creative solution for the shipping issue. Right. Tapping into the worldwide network of magnificent bastards in the whiskey tribe. I mm -hmm. think there may be a way for us to get whiskeys spread across the world okay. and bypass this convoluted system. Okay. And for what it's worth, whenever we're talking about not being able to get whiskeys on retail shelves, uh, we're not making, blending, finishing enough whiskeys right now to even begin to put stuff on retail shelves. Uh, talking about the entire craft whiskey situation in general, very appreciative to the distributors and the retail stores that are eager to get uh, our stuff on shelves as soon as there's enough. With that said, like most problems in life, they can be solved with a little whiskey science. All right, so Daniel, yeah. we have attempted to perfect, to hone in our drone delivery technology. Yes. Because we don't need no laws. <laughs> oh, it's up. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. That's good. Oh. What kind of drone is that? <laughs> That's Chad with a whiskey delivery. Ah, don't die. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Yeah. oh no! Maybe the Magnificent Bastards in the Whiskey Tribe want to create a network of drone way stations. Is this sort of like the Pony Express? Yes. I'm still, does this still qualify as direct to consumer or is this just sharing a whiskey with friends? I think this is so innovative. So forward thinking that there's no laws that really have taken into an account the brilliance that is this solution. Boom, boom, and then the blades. I got this. I think it's, this is probably, probably gonna work. Yeah. Now we need to deliver whiskey. How full? A reasonable pour? A, a, a generous That's pour. That's an ounce and a half. A generous pour. Generous pour? Yeah, dude. All right, there we go. All right. You know what we're gonna call these? What? We've always called them like Whiskey Tribe Challenge Coins. Yeah. It's a bit much. It's a bit, it's a bit wordy. You know what they're okay, called? Okay, what? They go in Glen Cairns. Right. Right? And they, they act as lids that right. have a recessed edge. They're Glen Coins. Glen Coins? <laughs> <laughs> Should we tape it on? Yes, tape the Glen Coin on. All right. It's good. Going straight to the top. All right. You think this is gonna work? This is totally gonna freaking work. Really? Yes. You think it can carry the weight? Well, I mean, you did kind of get it a little off, off center there. My hat's gonna blow off. Okay, we are on the top of the Wizard Academy Tower here. <laughs> I was doing it! Uh oh. We got red lights. All right, go get it. So basically we have a nice smooth lift off with the drone. Daniel is the happy homeowner. He's gonna run down there, that house, and receive the whiskey. And we can have a network of magnificent bastards across the country with a drone battery waiting. So the whiskey can hop from location to location with fresh batteries. It's really windy now. That's what destiny looks like, people. Barely making headway here. We'll see if I can get lower, get a little less of a headwind. All right, we're above the Welcome Center. I'm getting pushed off course. I see Daniel down there. We're 82% on the battery. Should be going up. We're good. Oh, I think I see him climbing up. Climbing up. Give him a chance to turn the camera on. 
We're bringing it in. Bring me the whiskey. Oh, getting sketchy on the signal here. We'll look straight down. I'm going for it. Come on. Oh, it's perfect. Oh. Yes. I don't think we've got a hardly a drop spilled. And clear. Now let's maneuver the whiskey glass. Ha ha! All right, take it off. Here we go. Go home, drone. Go home. Fly away. Be free. He's got the whiskey. <laughs> All right, let's bring it home. It's right level with me right now, coming straight for us. Oh, the shake on that thing. All right. Stinking laws. I, 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 I,